Hello students, today we are going to learn the second poem of your English textbook, First Flight. The name of the poem is Fire and Ice, which is written by Robert Frost. We had already got the introduction about the poet Robert Frost in the previous poem, Dust of Snow. Let me tell you once again about the poet. Robert Frost was a 20th century American poet. He was born in San Francisco in 1874 and died in Boston in the United States in the year 1963. His work was initially published in England before it was published in America. And he won Pulitzer Prize four times for his contribution to poetry. This poem, Fire and Ice, is a symbolic poem in which the poet is talking about the end of the world. Here the poet uses fire to represent human desire and ice to represent hatred. We know that fire and ice are two opposite things. Now, let's look into the first stanza of the poem. Some say the world will end in fire, some say in ice. From what I have tasted of desire, I hold with those who favour fire. In this stanza, the poet talked the belief of a group of people who say that fire will end the world. This set of people believe that the world will be burned and destroyed by fire. Here, fire symbolizes human desires. And the poet says that the unending desires have made people greedy and this has led to jealousy. These emotions of people would ultimately lead to the destruction of the world. Now the poet acknowledges this fact from his own personal experience that fire has the capability to bring human beings on the verge of destruction. So he would like to favor those people who say that the world will end in fire. Now let's look into the second stanza of the poem. But if it had to perish twice, I think I know enough of hate to say that for destruction, ice is also great and would suffice. In this stanza, the poet talked about the belief of another group of people. Some people believe that if the world has to perish twice, it will surely end due to ice. Here, ice symbolizes hatred. Poet believes that in today's world, hatred is spreading much among the people. It's a very sad thing. Hatred is long-lasting and it is as destructive as desire to bring an end to this world. It also can be a potent weapon to blast the entire world. Thus, the poet is trying to convey the readers that fire, ice, hatred, etc. are symbolically more powerful weapons than the nuclear weapons. Actually, this is the message the poet is trying to give us through this poem. Now, the central idea of the poem. The central idea around which the entire poem revolves is that human emotions are destructive when allowed to run out of control. They can destroy a person morally, mentally and physically. The poet tries to convey that love, compassion, equality, considerateness and sympathy alone can help mankind in establishing peace on earth. Fire and ice are symbolically used here. Fire symbolizes human desires and it can bring an end to this world. Ice symbolizes coldness, hate and indifference in human relationship and can be the cause of the end of the world. Now let's look into the glossary and the rhyme scheme of this poem. Fire is a symbolic representation of desire. Ice symbolizes hatred. Perish means to die or destroy. Hold means to agree. Favor, think it right. And suffice means to be sufficient. The rhyme scheme of this poem is A, B, A, A, B, C, B, C, B. Let's look into that. First answer. Last word of first line is fire. That is A. 
eyes we give b desire and fire rhyming with the first word so it is a so first answer the rhyme scheme rhyming pattern is a b a a is the rhyming pattern of the first answer second answer here the last word is twice so that will be b because it is rhyming with eyes then hate it is c then eyes again b great and hate are rhyming so it will be c suffice suffice twice eyes these are rhyming so it will be b so here the rhyming scheme is b c b c b b c b c b is the rhyming pattern of the second stanza okay now let's look into the poetic devices used here poetic devices are alliteration metaphor metonymy antithesis repetition paradox hyperbole these are the poetic devices used here in this stanza let's see first is alliteration so alliteration means you know that repetition of consonant sound here you can see sir sound is repeated some say okay sir sir sound is repeated here then word will end in fi so here ver ver sound is also repeated ver sound okay ver sound is also repeated then here also again sir sir sound so we can say alliteration then favor and fire fur sound is repeated okay fur sound is repeated so alliteration is one of the device used here then metaphor metaphor means you know indirect comparison is made between two different uh, objects here or different things here like fire fire and uh, ice these are compared to human desires and hatred fire is human desire and ice and hatred is compared okay so comparison is made between fire and desire and ice and hatred so indirectly these things are compared so we can say metaphor is the figure of speech here then metonymy here fire stands for desire so we can say metonymy means the substitute use of substitute word one one word is used for another word yeah one word is representing another so that is metonymy then mm -hmm. antithesis antithesis means you know um, use of opposite ideas yeah opposite word is used here fire and ice both are opposite to each other so this use of opposite word here is called antithesis okay then repetition uh, that if we come to the second stanza you can see here uh, repetition i i think i know i think i know so this i i repeated here so this is repetition okay and uh, uh, what else here it is paradox paradox means what paradox means use of contradictory or false statement with a hidden truth if it had to perish twice if the world had to perish twice two times the world had to perish two times so this is the uh, device here paradox is used here uh, by the poet okay it's a contradictory statement uh, then hyperbole means it's an over statement we can also say here an over statement that is the world has to uh, perish twice okay an over statement is used by the poet here so hyperbole and paradox is also used so these are some of the poetic devices used by the poet here okay so i hope that you all understood this poem well so we will meet in the next session until then take care bye thank you